everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, we're going to talk about a group of people that have just not received the recognition that they deserve. Or that they demand. <laughs> we, yeah, we're going to be yeah. finally, finally giving cis straight white men their due. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, it was International Women's Day, yeah, uh, and we're great mm. and all. I mean, I suppose women are cool or whatever, but yeah, yeah, we're, I guess uh, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that we invent uh, a day well, for that we appropriately honor men and the achievements, yeah, uh, that they they've had, the role that they continue to lead in this in, in this in this world, yeah. really. Even though there's been so much uh, really uh, stacked against them, and so yeah, especially lately, and so much talk about all these other groups, Ugh. everybody's just always talking. It's like we've here. forgotten men. Yeah, it's <laughs> white so, men. It's so hard. So yes, we will give them their due later on, <laughs> coming up in the show. Uh, for now, let's uh, let's let's launch into some stories. Yeah, what do you Dan, got? I've got a story. About a royal visit. Oh, the uh, Saudi king is uh, is visiting uh, Indonesia. Okay, uh, and uh, you know some accommodations have been made for okay. the king uh, because you know you gotta, he, he he he's 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 a king. He's the for king. Christ's sake, it's you, good to be the king. You uh, you know. You adjust, you adjust a few things in your country based on a king uh, coming for a visit. Yeah. Uh, also, it's not just the king. I guess I should. Oh, point out. okay. Uh, it also includes his entourage. Sure. Um, of uh, fifteen hundred people. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That, you know, because a king, he just can't travel by himself. No, no, no. You're... One must arrive with <laughs> a a certain presence. There must be a certain <laughs> level of production. You don't, you don't want to travel too light. It makes you look ridiculous. No. So you, you have a few friends come along with you. Yeah. Or f- multiple plane loads <laughs> of friends is even better. Or just thou- hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Jesus Christ. People ah. who will never even probably see the king during their, no, no, their no, no, visit, no. right? But they still travel with the king. Nonetheless. Oh so God, when he visited crazy. the presidential palace in Bogor, uh, which is near the capital of Jakarta, okay, uh, they uh, took the steps, the Indonesian government took the steps to make sure that uh, any sort of nude statue mm. had been covered Oh, or that's, that's at least good. surrounded by potted plants. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Carefully placed fern leaves or whatever. Exactly, yeah. Uh, they took that step. Well, he, uh, the entourage is moving on to Bali. Okay. And the local authorities have decided not to cover statues of Hindu deities uh-huh. uh, and semi-naked Uh-oh. Women, uh, during his visit. Uh-oh. Uh, and this is due to the awareness of the fact that this is uh, their culture, and that he's visiting their country. Y- you're coming to us. Yeah. Welcome to here. Was there a reason why you wanted to come to Bali? Right. Was there? Was it to just have more of the same? Right. No. So, uh, yeah. Um, this isn't going to cause much of an upstir or anything like that. The the government, the sort of the, the you know, national government or whatever... Um, they took the steps to to really be accommodating, but the, these folks in in Bali are just like, no way. But this we've talked about this before, <laughs> right? Didn't the Vatican right? like have to go have to like ask these questions like, what do we cover? What do we not cover? Well, what do we, Italy. What? Oh, Italy specifically okay. when um, the Iranian president visited. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? He did that little tour. Yeah, and Italy complied. France did not. Right. 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 Uh, to some consternation, but everybody's still alive. But it's also... Everybody like, got through it. Right. It's also... I mean, 
go ahead and try and tell France, your culture is not right for us, so fix it. Right. <laughs> right, right. Tell that to France. Right. See how that plays out. It usually doesn't go very well. No. Uh, but how sensitive do pe- is this guy, or do people think that he is? Right, exactly. Right? Like, and just because you're, you're the head of state of a Middle Eastern country, or you come from the Middle East. Right. Really? We have to cover all nudity? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you absolutely. Fortunately, for the United States, that's not really a problem. We don't have a lot of just nudity all around. But right. There are because, places in this world yeah. that celebrate the human form a little bit more than we do. More than here. And places closer to them, too. Yeah. Greece, I imagine. Oh, yeah. All kinds of. Just on display. Yeah, stuff just hanging out every which way. Yeah. Which so, makes me suddenly want to go to Greece. <laughs> Funny how I've never felt the impulse to go to Saudi Arabia. Like, there's never been a moment when I've no been desire. like, you know what sounds great? The Middle East. I no. need to get my ass to the Middle East. No desire whatsoever. You know what? I And on that note, I will pivot us to the United, United Arab Emirates. Oh. The UAE. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what a like my my image of the UAE is is that of a of a much more modern liberal uh, Middle Eastern country. I don't know that I would use the word liberal. Well, I mean, I imagine. So what I think of, of course, is is Dubai, right? And I think of like all the wealth and the the sort of conspicuous consumption that happens sure. there. Yeah, which just makes me think, you know. That means that there there is debauchery in Dubai. Yes. Where there is wealth, there is debauchery. So that's sure. and okay. and you know and and you know a lot of politicians bought and paid for sort of thing. Okay. Is, is what I assume. Okay. Well, it's not liberal. You're correct. And here's the here's <laughs> the proof is in this pudding. Um, a South African man and his Ukrainian fiance. Okay. Uh, in their both in their twenties. Have now been arrested after a, she went in to, to see a doctor complaining of abdominal pain. Oh, no. Turned out she had a little person inside. Oh. And they're not yet wed. <gasps> and that's a miracle. Illegal. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Seems, this, it's a miracle. Yeah, if they had claimed that, maybe they could weasel out. But no. <laughs> uh, apparently, uh, having sex outside of marriage in the UAE is against the law and these two are in fucking jail right what now. they they have not been heard from since january <laughs> no yeah so uh so holy shit things can get intense like even in even in the the places where you think like i don't well, think because they're so open to you know there's a lot of expats there and yeah like and and it's got like a very western vibe to at least, I, mean, at least, I don't know. Well, I, like I say, all of my imagery of UAE comes from Dubai. Right. right. And that feels Western as all fuck. Yeah. But don't apparently go there with your mistress and have some sexy times. No. Because if you get caught, holy jeez, you, you go to jail. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure if they were wealthy, they wouldn't be in jail right now, but... They, like if they owned something. Yeah, exactly. If 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 there was a burge named after one of them, <laughs> they would be fine. But no. Uh, no burges. The burge Tom. That's right. <laughs> uh so yeah, these these two are are in some some trouble. The Ukrainian uh embassy is working to sort of help them out, but Oh my goodness. They're trying what they're trying to do is just say let them get married. Just let him get married and then let him go. Like, yeah. they wanted to get married. Their plan was to get married. Right. They just did it in the wrong order for you. Right. Well, right. that's the problem. Yeah. Must be married before you can do those other things. There is an order. Wow. That's just... God. Freaky. Makes you... Uh... So, again, hooray for the Middle East. Let's all go there. <laughs> I think there are multiple countries there where you and I could be arrested and probably put to death just for walking just for, in. Just for this show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're, we just can't go. <laughs> there, is, well, there is evidence on the internets that we are not, uh, that, that we, we're just horrible people. We're criminals. Yeah. 
We say awful things. We do. And, you know, and uh, boy, we've said some things about Islam. Uh, yeah. That, uh, we've, we've said a thing or two. Yeah. Like, wow. Like this. We Islam have, is bullshit. This show has actually narrowed a lot of possibilities for us, Dan. I know. In our life. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm, I'm furious. I think it's important for us to be aware of that fact, though. Yeah. yeah. Rather than just like <laughs> blissfully, blithely... W- m- Sauntering our way into whatever Somewhere country, in the Middle East, yeah. just being like, "Hey, Hi, oh, guys. oh no, that we're, was bad." We're on the TGIA tour of the Middle East. Wait, what? <laughs> Who? What? Jail? What are you talking about? <laughs> we're American. Freedom of speech, people. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> Haven't you read the Constitution? Uh, it <laughs> works here too, right? We've read our Constitution. Oh. Was that a vampire? Yes. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. We have read the other con- <laughs> <laughs> No. That was a very perfect somewhere in the Middle East accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to locate. Yeah. Okay, Dan. Guess yeah. what? What? <laughs> this will come as no surprise, but it's, I suppose, just confirmation of... Uh, nonsense okay um so a uh, morning consult slash politico survey has found that a majority of evangelical christians believe trump uh and his claim that journalists quote make up quotes in their articles (laughs) god they believe it yeah it's working for for the Donald, yeah, uh, yeah. Fifty four percent of evangelicals agree that it is likely that journalists make up anonymous quotes. Uh, yeah, apparently uh, it's, this is a little terrifying. Forty four percent of registered voters in general agreed with that. Wow, which is terrifying. I mean, like if you ask me, do I believe that Breitbart would make up? A quote or that like right but they're not in my mind they aren't journalists no right they claim to be right but i mean people who like they but like yeah studied journalism yeah if you're if you're talking about like the ethics of journalism yeah i wouldn't you know. i mean i i would i wouldn't even accuse fox news of doing that and i no. disagree i mean they're no. clearly biased they're clearly on the wrong side of things in my right. view there's a difference between picking a quote and repeating it over and over and over, and taking it, or out, of taking it out of context, and la 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 la, right? Which right? all of which they've which proven is, willing to do, right? Which is bullshit. Which, which is, is bad journalism. They shouldn't be doing that, right? Right? Correct. But I, I don't think that they flat out just wholesale make it up. No, no. like just that this that it has it absolutely never. nothing, no basis in fact whatsoever. Right? Right? That's not. That's not. That's not what they do. No. That's not what I've ever suspected them of doing. No. I suspect them of bias, which right. is different. Right, exactly. And and framing things badly and all right. sorts of all, all I mean they they're they're egregious in many ways. Right. As are like MSNBC can do the same exact fucking same shit. thing. Yeah. So it's like but I would never believe that they would or it would it would it strains my credulity. Right. To 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 think that they would make up out of thin air. Right. A quote. But if I'm listening to NPR or BBC World Service, right, or I'm watching the PBS News Hour, right, or even you know CNN or New York wherever, Times, New York Times, Post. Washington Post, these high like those places, I don't suspect would ever go down that road and if they had a journalist a single journalist who did break that sort of bit of their code right they'd hang them out to dry absolutely it'd be the end of that person's career yeah and in journalism and real journalism and whatever outlet had that journalist would have to would be writing op-ed after op-ed about how bad that shit is right exactly and so it, it it just it's horrifying because what's what's being created now is this situation of well if if I suspect if that quote doesn't really work with my worldview right it must be made up 
Well, and like, that's that's it, the deal, right? The, this whole regime operates on the on the full basis of confirmation bias. They yeah. like their entire game is. I I know all the, you know. You agree with me, therefore you know politically, ish. Right. Or I pretend like we agree, right? And then everything that I say goes, and everything that anyone, the, anything that opposes me is fake. Yeah, and people buy it. I know, but I think fewer people now. I don't know. I I feel like I, I don't know. Like this is yeah. this is pretty rough. Um, That's scary. Sixty. What was it? Where is the Where is the line? Sixty five percent of Republican voters and twenty four percent of Democratic voters believe that journalists are creating fake news jesus christ right this is a complete disintegration of the national dialogue yeah we can't we can't talk to each other because you have your source right which is not based in reality right right and i have my source which they believe is which not based in reality they believe is not based in reality even though yeah <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a this is very bad for for these United States. Yeah, this is a bad moment because that. Uh, yeah, that third. What do they call it? The third. The the fourth estate. The fourth estate. Yeah. yeah, the third rail. The third. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the third rail. That fourth estate's pretty fucking important. Yeah, it's like yeah. everything. It's yeah. vital. It's the, it's sacred. Yes, like Jesus, not sacred. Journalism, it's a sacred, holy trust. Right. And I was, uh, do, do you listen to 99% Invisible? Sometimes. Ever? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great podcast. Uh, they did one on the post office, the U.S. post office, mm. and sort of the history of it. And the, at the founding of the nation, what they were, what the goal of the founders was by establishing the post office was not so that people could send each other birthday cards. Right. Right. Uh, it was so uh, newspapers could go anywhere in the country. Yeah. Be delivered anywhere in the country. I could, subs I could be wherever and I could be subscribing to, you know, a newspaper across the country. Right. And I could have all these different voices and all these different opinions and perspectives being delivered to my town where I could pick them up at the post office and then be able to know what's going on in the world. Be informed. That's the value that the founders placed on an informed populace. Yeah. Right. Uh, they did not see the internet coming. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no, they didn't. But like they, that's why they established the post office yeah. essentially. Yep. And yeah, they had, there was, there were other purposes for it as well. But I mean, this I, was, think, I, mean this I think was obviously a, they wanted to support commerce by allowing for junk mail. Obviously, <laughs> that's that was I mean, that was obviously also in there. Clearly, lives. clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought that was really fascinating, really interesting. And, and yeah. uh, you know, you think about that. If if the if the founders had had uh, come along, uh, come along or had a different set of technology available to them, they would have they would have subsidized that form of technology. Yeah. But what they had for dispersing information in its day was the post office. And if it had been radio, they would have figured out how to get radio to be dispersing. it. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was just this realization of sitting there and listening to it of like, that's how important it was to them. Right. Yeah. It's and, it's vital. It's it's absolutely vital, and we and, can't. And and if 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 the trust is eroded, yeah, uh, then we have nothing. Right. That's scary. And it's not like the media has always been this, you know, super highly responsible, take a very moderate view or a very balanced view. No, well, there, there's always been extremes in the media, but people have known right. where they where their allegiances lie. And, uh, well, the other problem is that like, and we have it has become libel laws. It has become a huge, like, yeah, there, there, there are laws why, in why place. Why are people not suing over this shit? Right. Yeah. And that's the quickest way to shut this down is the people who are being smeared need to be. Well, it's tricky. Libel's not easy when you're in the public sphere. Libel's not easy no, to I prove. Know. Um, anyway. Yeah. 
that's everybody pray for the for the state of the American uh, journalism industry. Anyway, uh, I'm going to move us on to uh, to uh, Michigan, where a pastor. You know, we we have done you and I have done many uh, stories about parents who lose who whose children die because of their religious based neglect. Right. Uh, this happens all too often in our country and in other countries. Uh, it hap- you know, so recently there was another instance where a uh, a, a couple um, lost their two year old to mo- to pneumonia to easily treatable pneumonia. Mm. You know, pneumonia is one of those things that responds super easy to uh, to antibiotics. Yeah, their daughter uh, had you know had had pneumonia, and uh, they were members of a congregation that doesn't uh, believe in medical care. So their daughter died. Jesus. Well, what's interesting about this case, and the reason that I bring it up, because I don't want to keep telling the same story over and over, although you know it bears repeating because it's fucking horrific. But uh, in this case, the pastor of this church, who was aware of the situation, yeah. is arrested too. Oh wow! Because good, good, he good, was good, good, good. because he has been deemed to have been in a quote mandated reporter position, meaning. Right. If he sees parental abuse happening, yeah. he's required to re- to report it. Now, he doesn't see it as parental abuse. He encouraged this parental abuse. So what? But he Still is... Still parental abuse. He is under law, legal obligation to report people who aren't going... Who aren't seeking medical attention for their children. An awkward position for that particular pastor to be in. But now he... But he's... Uh, yeah, he's been arrested. He's, he's been charged... Where'd you say this was? Uh, in Michigan. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, and yeah, he's been he's so yeah he's been charged with failure to report child abuse. Good. I love that. That's a great development. Yeah, I there think needs so. To be more of that, and hopefully that will will propagate through uh, through the country because because what needs to happen is that there needs to be very real world consequences if you're going to fucking encourage people. Yeah, I mean, all that will happen, all that will really change is that these pastors will just, they'll say, listen, don't get medical assistance, and but don't tell me about right. it. Right, yeah, exactly. Because I, I don't want to go to jail. Because I want you guys to go to jail, not me. <laughs> I need to stick around and tell other people to kill their children. I need to be here. There are too many children, people. Too many children. There are too who, many children. Who, who need killing. Yeah. I need to be out. Out on the loose, at large, <laughs> yeah, encouraging yeah. people. Because let me tell you something: these awful. inmates, they're not having kids. No, I can't. I can't convince any of them to kill their kids. No, fucking murder by neglect Ugh. happening all over the country. In Jesus' name, Amen. <laughs> yeah, hooray! That's awful. All right, uh, Dan. Yeah. There's a group of of Americans who just don't want health care. Oh, they don't want it. Oh, cool. well, uh, at least this is according to uh, Cangre- uh, Congress, Kansas Congressman uh-huh. or Congress. He's a kangaroo. Uh, 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 Representative Roger Marshall mm. uh, says that the poor don't want health care. Don't they? No, just like Jesus said, the poor will always be with us. There is a group of people that just don't want health care. and aren't <laughs> going to take them care of themselves. <laughs> just like homeless people, I think just morally, spiritually, socially, some people just don't want health care. The Medicaid population, which is on a free credit card as a group, do probably the least preventative medicine and taking care of themselves and eating healthy and exercising. And I'm not judging. I'm just saying socially, that's where we are. So there's a group of people that even with unlimited access to health care are only going to use the emergency room when their arm is chopped off or when their pneumonia is so bad they get brought in. Wow. Guess what this man did for a living prior 
Oh, you're going to tell me he's a doctor. <laughs> to being an elected official. Son of a bitch. Uh, an obstetrician. Mm-hmm. Um, who uh, claims that he, you know, he, uh, he, he saw plenty of poor... This is in sort of damage control mode now. Right. Oh, we saw plenty of, you know, poor people in my, in my clinic. Right. Whatever, yeah, of right? course you did. Um, he says, I am a physician, not a politician. While I don't perfectly rehearse talking points, my agenda is driven by two realities. That Obamacare has, de- has been detrimental to patients and that we must care for all in need no matter what. Okay, you're a politician, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't get to say I'm not a politician when you are a politician. Where you're a politician. Also, here's the thing. Did he just call for a single payer system? Because that's what that sounded like at the end. We must care for all in need no matter what. Like, well, he's saying he's trying to say in his like little backtrack here that he doesn't have a problem with <laughs> Medicare and Medicare is not or Medicaid. Medicaid's not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> like we're, we're going to care for the poor. We're going to care for the poor. Yeah. But it's it's like uh, they don't want it, though. We're going to have to foist it on them. We're yeah. going to have to force them to, to take it because they're they, not going to use it. They don't want it. Well, that seems like a perfect deal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Extend it to them. Offer it to them, and it's not going to cost you anything because they don't they're not going to use it. According right. to you, according to you. So yeah, exactly. Like, what are you even saying? If what you're saying is they don't want it, then it costs us nothing to offer it to them, right? And if they free of charge, and if their arm does come off or they do get pneumonia, guess what? We should be taking care of them, which we already would be. So, what's your problem other than you just wanted to? S- Talk shit about poor people? Yeah, this is like uh, Jason Chaffetz's stupid oh my comment God. about the iPhone. Yeah. Maybe poor people should, should, you know, should, you know, forego with their iPhones yeah. so they can pay for their health care. <laughs> because health care costs as much as an iPhone. Yeah. New. In point of fact, there's you can't get a health care plan <laughs> for the cost of an iPhone. So. <laughs> nice try, Jason. But also... Also, just Shit fuck face. off. Like, people are poor, and you're yeah. an asshole. Yeah. And he especially. He is a... Like, oh. this guy, I think, is just a ding-dong. We Yeah, we, um, we had somebody write into us this week that said, hey, will you just will you guys in Utah please just take Jason Chaffetz back to Utah? We don't want him. No. Are you kidding me? The answer is no. Fuck you. I don't want him as our representative, but I don't want him in Utah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. No, he's awful. He's awful. He's dumb. He's, he's got. A, yeah, I don't like his face. Badger face, um, motherfucker. And he's a, he's the worst. Yeah. He's literally the worst. Yeah. So you're welcome, America. Yeah. From Utah with love. So yeah. So that, so that's going on. Um. And this is you know this constant demonizing of the poor. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I mean, like they're talking poverty is one thing. But then he he starts conflating everything. It's yeah. just like homeless people, right? Exactly. Wait, and, wait. We were talking about homeless people. And when, what's when amazing were we talking is talking about homeless people. What, poverty what? is not. I mean, sadly, poverty. You know, yeah, c- could potentially lead to homelessness. It can at least a temporary stint of it. Yeah, uh, I know. Depending people, on your situation, I know people who have who have had stints of homelessness because they, yeah, because of poverty. Right. Uh, but, but let's be clear they're different what we're problems. talking about. They're here. very different problems. Yeah. And most, yeah, chronic homelessness is not, uh, is very different than poverty. Yes. Here's another thing. Uh, he's not basing this on anything but his own personal experience. He's got no, he's, he's got no numbers, no data to back up what he's saying. Mm. And this, we'll get to this later in the show, but boy. People, white males oh. who who have been to college sure feel like they know the answers to every goddamn thing for every goddamn body. Well, that's not nice, Dan. It's not nice. You're right. <laughs> it's absolutely not nice. <clears throat> Man. The, and here's the thing. I remember, like, I say this as someone who used to be totally, I mean, I used opi- to be white. I used to be white. It's true. I'm transracial now. Uh, but I don't see color. No, but I, you know, I used to be, I'm very willing to opine as the, as listeners, as our listeners will clearly corroborate. Yes. You, you, you do open your mouth and share opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike you, who is so, 
preserved <laughs> and everything. But I, you know, here's the thing. There's a, there's a lot that I am no longer willing to opine about that I used to be a douchebag like this and just talk out of my ass. And yeah. Pretend, and just, I guess I just thought I knew what I was talking about. Like, what the fuck? I did not. Hmm. So, yeah, you, you actually have to have some, something backing you up before you make a claim about all poverty people. Well, and I love that this guy... All people like, who don't have a lot of money think blank, well, says the doctor. He's somehow working Jesus into the whole thing. And then, like, <laughs> some, a lot of the response to this guy was also like, um, what, like, what Jesus are you talking about? Like, well, you know, Jesus who hated, on the black, mount. who hated uh, poor, poor people. Right. Jesus was super against poor people. Hated them. <laughs> Spat on them every chance he got. Like, it, it just doesn't even fit with, like, the message of Christianity. No. Which, yeah. if you get to its essence, is, you know, about loving one another uh, and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of essences. There are. And if some you of wanted, them conflict with each other. So. And they do. And people <laughs> turn it into all sorts of different things. But if you look at basic Jesus, yeah, Jesus was about love. Well, he was also about some militancy, too. Jesus was but so he was, basic. Jesus had his contradictions. It's true. <laughs> but anyway. I just talked myself out of that one. I <laughs> yeah. The, the Jesus that I grew up with was all about, like, serving the poor, yeah. not shitting on them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, hey. Uh, good news. For sportsters everywhere. Oh yeah, Nike has a new uh, a, a new <gasps> product on the market. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, something that fits into your shoe that tells you. Uh, well, they already have that. Yeah, they already um, have that. Let's see. <laughs> um, some kind of wristband that. Uh, no, no, that's no, that's been out no, for a while. No, no, no. Um, the sport. The uh, you ready for this? Okay. The Nike Pro Hijab. <laughs> that's right. It's, of uh, course. No, of course. It's, that makes sense, actually. It, it Actually, you know what? Here's what's funny. It totally does make sense because uh, there are now more and more women competing in in uh, pro sports and in amateur sports in the yeah. Olympics and whatever. Yeah. And uh, there have been complaints that they can't find a hijab that is a, quote, high performance hijab. Well, yeah, you want something that's got some good wicking you want action. You, you, you want, know, you want it to wick the moisture away. Yeah, you want that. You want you, you want, want it to, to min breathe. minimize drag. Uh huh. Yes. If you have to be fast. Yeah. Wow. You might see people wearing them. Just this is what I would. This, my first impulse was like, actually, <laughs> I, we might see non-Muslims wearing sports hijabs, adopting the sports hijab thing because, like, yeah, I mean, it's basically it 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 takes away some of the drag of hair and some of the. Uh, you know, it makes well, you more air doesn't get in the way. Right. It gets your hair out of your way. It, yeah. it, it, it basically just it's and basically who wants a ponytail. It's basically a hood right. uh, that's tight on the head mm. and and leaves a, a, you know, an oval shaped face hole. Sure. Yeah. And uh, everybody loves that. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, they so they worked with uh, with some Olympian ladies uh, including uh, Saudi Arabia's Sarah Attar, who uh, who was a runner, and uh, an Emirati uh, Emirati uh, weightlifting uh, Olympian a Amna Al Haddad, uh -huh. and they uh, they yeah they they announced a the Nike. It's got the uh, the swoosh on the side. You know this again though makes a ton of sense. This is an untapped market. Yeah. Right? Oh. Uh, there have probably, there's probably been a real absence of profits, uh, coming from hijab sales that have flown into the West. Yeah, exactly. That have flowed to the West. Um, you know, like this is a great way to capitalize on their misogyny. Yeah, I think absolutely. It's, I think it's a great and bold move by Nike. Now the question is, how are they going to, to revolutionize the burkini? I think that's the next thing. There, believe me, Nike. Nike's all over it. Swimwear for the modern Muslim lady. <laughs> it's it's ankles and wrists. Yeah, everything's covered. A little padding to hide some shape. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, and give you flotation. It's great. <laughs> it's perfect. 
You'll never drown. It should be buoyancy neutral, to be fair. Well, you know. It, and you know the the performance one is buoyancy neutral. Oh, uh, okay. The, the the one just for play, right? Can have some can add can buoyancy. save lives. Yeah, really, can really save lives. Really, wow, <laughs> that's great. So there you go. Uh, there's a there's the the it's an uh, yeah. Frankly, if you're in business, go after the religious folks. You know, let's where's <laughs> I want to know. I want I want to start seeing all that stuff. The you know, performance Mennonite wear. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the German Baptist, the little bun. The, yeah, thing. exactly. Let's, bun. let's, let's figure bun out a covers. way to, to, to make that work. Um, helmets for them. <laughs> the, the performance Amish hats. Yeah. Yeah. No buttons, but, uh, but all the wicking you could ever want, <laughs> Ezekiel. Uh, it's there for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you have ideas for uh, for performance wear for for the, uh, the 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 religiously clothed in your life, uh, you can you can tell us all about it. Write to us podcast at thankgodimatheist dot com, or you can leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is four two four six 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 eight four four two. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook dot com slash tgi atheist, and click like. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, but we'll let you in. Yep. So, Dan. Yo. Do you feel like listening to a clip of audio? I do. Just like I feel like <laughs> listening to a clip of audio? I do if it's Pastor Manning. Uh, <laughs> pastor, uh, which, which Manning or J- David James Manning? That's the one. Is that the guy? That's the one. Uh, oh my God. This guy, he's such a, he, he, here's the thing. I, just as a bit of background for our listeners, this guy was like on the Trump train for a while and then disembarked because Trump said nice things about gay people. And pastor Manning was like, <laughs> hell no. Done. In his like fraud, I'm out of here. I don't like that. And then he, uh, and so now he's like anti Trump, and he, and, and boy, is he. And I mean, in a serious way. And he just, and, and he'll just go against any old body in the Trump administration now. So, so let's, let's have a listen. I have treated the altar of God as a sacred place and should be looked upon as such. Now, the Oval Office is not necessarily sacred, but certainly special uh, and should be given the highest kind of respect. I simply want to go back to the Kellyanne Conway photo of her on the sofa, on her knees, with her dress jacked up and her legs wide open. Mm -hmm. Um, And go ahead and call her a stringy head slut. This is one of the ugliest, vilest things I've ever seen um, in such a sacred place. And Tribulation Trump is standing there, and Amarosa is standing beside, and all them Hamite men are standing yeah, there, yeah. you know, getting erections. I've never, I've, I, 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 you know, it shows you the level of demonic, sexual, demonic yeah. spirits. That's, I, I don't blame Kellyanne Conry for that. I blame Tribulation Trump. Because he's a demon, yes, he and is. obviously he's having yeah. sex with her, and she probably just feels like, you know, I can be like this around him because I think he likes me that way. You, 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 this is the ugliest slut I've ever seen, and, and they're very close, Conway and Trump. This is an ugly, stringy-head slut. Damn. Oh, there's, there's some shit to unpack. <laughs> yeah um a it's the ugliest like worst thing he's ever seen just in case you're wondering a woman with her knees on the sofa is the worst thing he's ever seen yeah stringy haired slut yeah and i have a problem with that <laughs> yeah too, right it's like whatever you think of kellyanne conway and i think some things <laughs> uh that's not what you do yeah, you don't you don't go around uh, calling women sluts just because they. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> he loves it. He gets a. 
as a way to demean and to like i mean yeah what she's doing her posture and her the the the, the way that she's sitting on the couch it's inappropriate it's yeah for for the setting for the people that are in the room for the, the level of respect that she's showing to the to you know these african american visitors yeah, to the a, white house it, yeah you know so forth and so on like you you can criticize this action just fine yeah you don't have to call her a slut also like i don't i don't even know how to wade into the fact that he called all of these african american men in the oval office Hamites? Yeah, it's a that's a mess too. I don't even like like I get that Ham was Noah's son who was marked with darkness, I guess, and so the, all of I mean I've heard it, the theory put forward that black folks are descended from Ham, sure. But I always thought that that was like something that white people said to talk about why we know that black people are inferior. So for a black yeah. man to be using the term Hamite, I don't know what he's getting at. Maybe someone out there can enlighten me. Uh, if you watch his show enough, there's probably some context here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Know. But it seems like he's, and they're all, and he's like telling, he's say, telling us that, and these are, by the way, let's be clear. All of these men and women that are in the room are representing uh, historically black colleges in the country. Right. <laughs> and Somehow he's saying that they all have erections for right. Kelly and there's Conway? a woman who's kind of seated strangely texting on her phone. Oh, my God. I will agree with Pastor Manning that Trump is a demon, though. That's obviously clear. Tribulation Trump? Tribulation. Tribulation Trump. Yeah. He's a demon. <laughs> <laughs> he's like halfway to Yoda, this guy. Yeah. In his voice. Mm, demon he is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, oh Trumpy Trump. There's some tribulation in the world. Uh, I had some I just... folks write into us, call into us. Uh, I'm gonna get uh, dive into some emails real quick. Um, this one is from Mike, who's he's talking about how you and I made some sort of offhanded comment that like because Mormons uh, you talk about hot drinks, mm. and you're, they drink hot drinks, but like they. That was the original wording in the Mormon word of wisdom that was supposed to be their diet code. Right. Uh, was no hot drinks. Right. And we joked, what, about, really... what about soup? It seems to be the <laughs> nether region between food and hot drink. And apparently, uh, well, George Q. Cannon, one of the, the church's sort of uh, luminaries from, mm -hmm. our, from the past, yeah. said, uh, we must feed our children properly. We must not permit them to drink liquor or hot drinks or hot soups or use oh, tobacco God. or art other articles that are injurious. Boy, I so wish that had stuck. <laughs> I wish Mormons had a weird thing about soup. Oh, my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> we don't do soup. <laughs> Gazpacho, yes. It's not hot. It's right. great. Yeah. It's, that's fine. They, totally on they'd board. They have this whole line of cold soups <laughs> available in Utah. Oh my God! With Jello somehow incorporated, Ooh, cubes of Jello floating in the <laughs> in the Kool Aid soup. Yeah, uh, Mike also <laughs> said, uh, "Well, yeah, I'm I've got too much, Mike. I can't go into everything, but thanks for sending that in." Uh, I'll go to Emily, who said, uh, "Who's calling me out?" Um, oh, because last week what I did you do Dan. Well, I here's what I said. I said that uh, the pro one of the main problems in our country right now is that pe we think of people on the opposite side of our ideology uh -huh. as our enemies. Right. And I said that I think that that's wrong. Here's her response. Okay. Uh, your assertion, uh, m dear Frank and Dan, Dan especially, your assertion midway through the podcast about trying to extend an olive branch to our countrymen irks me. I fall on Frank's side. I think the policy of not considering these people your enemy is the system that got us to Trump. Obama and the weak left have caved and extended olive branches to the Republicans for years uh, to try and meet some middle ground. Meanwhile, the Republicans stand fast and block your Supreme Court pick unconstitutionally without abandon. Uh, you have drawn the line somewhere and con uh, you have to draw the line somewhere and context matters. 
you are having a conversation with someone, if you are having a conversation with someone uh, sucked up into that ideology who's really a good person at heart, yes, try to reach out to them, not fight them. But considering people like Pat Robertson not to be your enemy, get fucking real. Robertson has lived for a thousand years and has no doubt been in conversations with people like you. He is a fucking sociopath and you are being way too soft. Uh, She goes on, but that's the gist of things. So, uh, like, like you said last week, there are people out there who are trying to take people's rights away from them. Uh-huh. There are people out there who are doing awful things. Yes. I still maintain that my countrymen are not my enemy and that they may be doing things that I disagree with, but my approach to them is, uh, is not that they are my enemy, but that they are incorrect in their view. And, and the, the way, here's the thing to my mind, when you, when you are sort of engaged in an ideological struggle with another person and you know, if you fight and fight your enemy and you win, then you, then what you have is a vanquished foe. And what you get then is a bunch of people who haven't given up their ideologies. They've just lost the, the social battle. And that means that it foments, it breeds, it lives under the surface, and it bubbles. And then, you know, 20, 30, 50 years later, it flares back up again, and we see it. You know, we can see that now in uh, in the rise of the alt-right and the rise of sort of this new and very emboldened racial, racist, uh, and and sexist, and uh, homophobic... Uh, alt right. So you're saying you want to beat the idea. I want to beat the idea, not That's... the person, because I don't want a vanquished foe. I want a new ally. I think that that's a much more powerful thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the... It, I think in a perfect world where you're coming from, Dan, I think that it maybe could work, right? But I, I think that her points here are, are pretty pretty sound this this you know we're we are the 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 left has always been pretty easy on the right i don't know that that's true i think it's pretty true you think in the 60s the left was easy on the right i think that um well no we talked about this we talked about needing to stand up and needing to fight and needing to to uh um uh, make your case right right and that there are times when you have to face the unreasonable with uh, a little bit of unreason on your on your you know with your, a fair your, with an amount of force with, with an amount de- of force a, a degree yeah. of, of um I, I i just i don't know i i don't have my thoughts completely collected at the moment but I think that um, I, I hear what you're saying that it's it's tough to 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 just go about demonizing everybody who doesn't agree with you. The trick right? here because is that that's basically what 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 we're currently existing in right. in this country. Right, that's where we are. Right, is both sides have effectively demonized each other. Well, and what that means but is that nobody's I will say listening. That it does feel like our side of things that the left tends to be more willing to be conciliatory conciliatory to reach out and try to work with you know the, the this other side that is stonewalling us constantly maybe right and at least this is the reality of uh, that's where we're at right now the right stonewalls the left 100 percent, and they did it when they weren't completely in power and now they're doing it that when they're completely in power, right? And it, and I don't think that you need to. Uh, again, the the demonization of each side is the is the problem for me. That's that's where I kind of agree with you. Yeah, but I also don't know that I'm willing to go as far as you because when there are people who are actively working against you, at like. You, your group, yeah. is targeted. They don't like you. They don't want you here. 
right? right? They 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 want you to just go away, right? That's an existential threat on who who you are and what your community is, and I hear that that, that you do have enemies. You have political enemies in that regard. But the enemy is the ideology. And it's me, those people who keep pushing it, who won't let go. To me, I think, you know, those people are a problem. But I don't have enemies. I don't have, I don't have any enemies. I don't understand the concept of having enemies. It's, it's, it's this us versus them that is entirely the problem. And, the, and, the, and you know, the, the, to my mind... I don't get this way on every issue. Right. This is not me saying, oh, I disagree with your fiscal policy um, or your idea of where America sits in the world. You are therefore my enemy. I'm not preaching complacency or or inactivity. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that there are certain instances and it has specifically to do with people's rights and people's place in this country. And when you were a member, again, those groups, when you're being targeted... And you're being undervalued, not undervalued, completely dis, like discredited and de- devalued completely. Right. Right. Dehumanized. Dehumanized. Yeah. The people who are doing it to you are your enemy. I can see. I can see how you right? would see it that way. I, I'm fine with uh, like they, I they get are that. your political enemy. They're not. You know. I want new words. <laughs> I, I'm not okay with this enemy thing. I'm just not. They are they are people who oppose you, and I feel like you. And they're, and they're people an that, that that need you know. And the, so, what is an enemy? And their ideology needs to be needs to be fought. Right. What is an enemy in your mind? What is an enemy? Why is that word causing such problems? For an you? enemy is a person who has to be fought, and I don't believe in fighting the person. I believe in fighting the the fight. The ideology. I believe that the, the 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 thing that needs to be taken down is the thinking. It's not the person, right? But you, and try I, changing these people, right? Well, that's what I, and, my and so, point is. The so people work, who are, the so people like them politically. Pat Robertson. My point is the people like Pat Robertson won't be changed, right? So fight it. So so you fight the ideology on a larger scale in the larger venue, right. and you defeat them. By by convincing the rest of the country that they are wrong. But I think you need to know who your actual enemies are. You need to know who the people are who will never change, who are just going to keep coming after you. And you need to know what they think and you need to know how they're how they're organizing. Right. Those people are legitimate enemies. OK, well, I mean, and maybe we're getting into a semantic problem here, but I, I to my mind, those are just wrong people. Right. But you have to fight them. You, you use the word enemies are people that you fight you fight pat robertson no i just fight what tooth he, and nail i fight i fight against what he's proposing All right. that's how i view it anyway I, I i'm just trying what i'm looking for is a way to defeat this tribalism that is shredding our nation right now this i'm in my group you're in your group and we can't even talk because you're in your group and I'm just going to cut and, and we and, and people just literally banging heads against each other, banging talking points at each other yeah. and no one actually talking. Did you see the TED talk? By the way, I'm going to plug this TED talk. There's a, an amazing TED talk by uh, a woman, uh, something Phelps something, who is a former Westboro Baptist uh, oh, okay. member, uh, you yeah. know, born into it. She she talks about, you know, holding up God hates fag signs at five right. years old. Right. And she talks about what got to her and what got her out of it. Okay. And it is a brilliant t- TED Talk. And, you know, it, what got my attention was the same TED Talk was shared on my wall. You know, I saw it shared by one of my f- friends who's a who's a staunch Christian, con- you know, a, a, a dyed-in-the-wool Christian, and by... Sam Harris and American Atheists. Right. And I thought, you know what? When something's shared by both of those two people, that's something to pay attention to. Right. And it's a it's an amazing TED Talk. And and I encourage everybody. And that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. You go you go watch it and, and let me know. Do we have a voicemail we want to play? Do. We have a couple today, actually. Cool. Um, this first one is a listener uh, who is responding to... Um, 
our discussions about what got us out of the LDS church, and he's sharing his story. Yeah. Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Todd. Like you too, I'm an ex-Mormon from Salt Lake City, Utah. And your stories at the end of the episode about why you left the Mormon church, um, well, I really related to them. Um, my story was somewhere in the middle between the two of yours, actually, um, in a few different ways. The one was that I first left the church after just, you know, doing the experiment where I wondered, well, what, what if there is no God? What if I, what if I don't believe? And then once I did that, it was like everything turned inside out, and there was no going back. But the other thing I found interesting was the um, the experiment where, you know, you were trying to figure out if you were gay or not. The thing is, I tried that experiment to see if I could decide to be gay, and I found out that I was actually bisexual, something that I never considered until... Well, something I never really considered until after I left the church. Anyway, thanks for doing the show. Love listening every week. TDIA. Well, that ain't, ain't that uh, something. Yeah. You know, you were uh, you were talking, Frank, last week about like how it felt like it, how it could feel like a very dangerous experiment for a, a, a man to or a person to sort of question their own sexuality and genuinely yeah. ask themselves. Well, he came up with he gets both. Yeah, that's he, not bad. He won the lottery. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, that's just that just doubles the pool of people that you can have sex with. That's amazing. Well, and congratulations. Kind of doubles, in theory, doubles. Well, the, yeah, there's a there's yeah, because <laughs> increases. I'll increases. just say increases significantly. Yeah, yeah, just great. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. good for you. Well done, and and uh, way to be uh, ready and open and honest with yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Should we do another one? Yeah, do another one, and then I'll get to another another email. Okay, well, and uh, let's see. This other one is um, somebody calling and responding to the um, oh the the sword in the stone, basically that story that you that you shared last week. Sword in the stone. The sword. They pulled the sword the store the sword out, and oh oh, <laughs> they 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 yeah they they wrenched a sword from a Christian monument yes that's the one <laughs> they did yeah. not become the king of england no well <laughs> basically the same thing <laughs> indeed hey frank and dan this is zach from the red a club and i was calling about the story you had last week with the folks that took the sword out of the grave and beat it into a plowshare i thought that was pretty funny seeing how the only mentions of beating swords into plowshares are in the old testaments and jesus had a couple different things to say about it. He, in Matthew 10, 34, uh, says, don't suppose that I came to bring peace. I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. He also tells his disciples uh, in another section that they should sell their purses and buy some swords. So there you have it. Uh, idiots abound. Good luck to you guys, and uh, God bless. Just just kidding. Just, just joking. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Um, there you go. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's not all peaches and cream up there in Jesus Town. No, and you. You, again, you can basically make uh, the message of Jesus be whatever fits your worldview. Yeah, and what you want. Yeah, exactly. World, your worldview to be. And let me tell you something: everybody else is doing it wrong. <laughs> I know what Jesus really meant because I found this verse over here and everybody else uh is doing it wrong cuz Jesus confirms everything that I already thought yeah clearly right right here i'm going to do one more email we got one from gaz uh in apparently in sunny australia okay uh hey guys love the show just thought i'd write in because something you guys discussed got me into uh got to me a bit I was taken back when hearing the attitude you guys had a couple weeks ago when you were having a laugh at Jesus' tiny penis on Michelangelo's sculpture. I was going to let it slide until you had another crack at it the very next show. I'm sure you guys would uh, be acutely aware of body image issues that many people face. The unhealthy way that a lot of guys worry about their size is driven by comments of the very sort you guys were making. I, I, I did look up the sculpture and, uh, in question, and yes, it was very small. However, having a laugh at someone's dick size is no different than having a laugh at their race or any other attribute that they are born with and can't change. And to do so suggests that it is inadequate or wrong in some way. 
I just thought you guys would have been a little more sensitive uh, to an issue like this. You know, I, I chose to read this one because I am going to say he's right. I am going to say fuck us for making it seem like there's anything wrong at all with having a small penis. We're dicks. That's stupid. Yeah. Of course it's okay to have a small dick. It's great. Yeah, of course. Like, I, why are we, yeah, why were we playing into that nonsense? That's just, you know, schoolyard stuff that I was raised with that I, I never even, like, I, I, it hadn't occurred to me to question yet. It, 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 it felt kind of fun to make fun of Jesus' something. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were going after. It's like, <laughs> if you want to you emasculate Jesus just because, you know, it'll, it would bug Christians if, yeah. if we did that. Yeah, and, exactly. But, you know. But it's playing into a narrative it, that's not... Not cool, right? And uh, yeah, so and, and I would, and, and I want people to call offended. me out when I, when I, if I fat shame somebody, fuck me. If I small dick shame somebody, fuck me. Fuck me. If I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna just shame someone for something they literally cannot change, right? And that is that isn't a problem, right? Why the? You know what? Thanks for calling me out. Yeah, uh, we we appreciate that. So, do we have anybody, uh, uh, anyone to thank? We week? do. We have, I'm going to say it, Yosef. Okay. Um, is a new supporter on Patreon. Uh, he is a member of the Faithful. Lovely. And uh, James continues to be our savior. Yeah. And uh, as, our, as our top donor. And uh, yeah, and if you too would like to join um, all of our... our patreon supporters you can do so yeah. by going to thank god i'm atheist.com and clicking on uh the patreon uh, button it helps us tremendously uh with with the produ- producing and, and and creation of the show and it helps uh and and uh, you know it you get some some fabulous uh little incentives as well so if you want to be a part of that uh it, it's it's very kind if you would go to thank and God much appreciated very much appreciated if you if you choose a, a, to to show how much you value us go to pay, go to thank God I'm atheist.com and click on that patreon button and uh, and and boy we'll, we'll just appreciate the heck out of you and uh, and God bless. Oh, Frank. Dan. It's not, it, you know, yesterday for us, not, not for those listening, but yesterday for us was indeed uh, International Women's Day. Oh. I don't know if you know that. Also, uh, like, don't go to work, right? Wasn't that something? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. A day without women sort right. of thing. I think, I think that part of the protest was less, I don't know. Well, it would have been really interesting if all the women had just sort of gone away, like some <laughs> they hide retreat. Yeah, they they find some little corner, no women. Yeah, for a whole day. Yeah, but I, they didn't do that. I wouldn't like that very much. I I very much enjoy the women in my life. Well, but that's could, the whole point, Dan. Right. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's yeah. that's the fundamental of the whole thing. Correct. Anyway, uh. If your Twitter, if your Twitter slash uh, Facebook is anything like many of us mm-hmm. out there, ladies and gentlemen, International Women's Day uh, could also be termed International Find Out Which of Your Friends Is a Secret Misogynist Day, <laughs> uh, where you see a whole bunch of people, uh, men, very angry uh, and upset about all of this. Women getting their own day. Rampant feminism that's just uh, unfair and not right. It's unfair, Dan. What, what do uh, men get? Well, out we're. Of this whole thing? I don't know. I think you and I have come up with a great. We're, we're going to celebrate Men's Day. Or, or uh, I think uh, we dubbed it <laughs> International Privilege Day. International Privilege Day. I think uh, if that, you are, that seems appropriate. Because if you're white and male and cisgendered and straight. Yeah. You just don't feel like anybody's celebrating you. Yeah. So All these other groups get celebrations. Yeah. 
the LGBT community gets pride. Get, they get parades yeah. for crying out loud. Women get a whole day and maybe yeah. a month, and there's ribbons that people wear. Yeah. So we want to congratulate you on some of your uh, best achievements and we, some of the, your struggles and your fights. We don't um, get to feel special, we straight white men. No, and so <laughs> I would like to congratulate uh, straight white men on... Uh, on giving themselves the vote and then having the <laughs> right. vote since votes were invented. Right, exactly. Yeah. We, we, we achieved, finally, the vote once we decided to allow ourselves to do it. <laughs> so that's hooray for us. I'm, you know, I'm going to... Can I do one? Yeah, sure. I want to celebrate all of the scientific achievements that we managed while we made sure that half, uh, more than half the population couldn't participate. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Doing it without women. Without, without women, without, yeah. I mean, for in large part, we did it without like, you know, black folks for most of the, most yeah. of the time we did it. We, we, so we achieved quite a bit considering that we were like taking a ha- more than half of the talent <laughs> out of the, out of the pool. How did it even happen? It's amazing imagine that we got if, as far uh, as we did. Imagine if women and minorities had been in had, the pool. Had been allowed to participate. How much further along would we be? <laughs> But nonetheless, no. But we did achieve White some men things. Did it alone. We did achieve some things in that process. Um, what else you know, we got? I I I want to say, you know, it's uh, hey, it's pretty cool that you've uh, figured out how to make more money than women doing the same job. Right. That's awesome. You're right. That's uh, way way to start at the top of the ladder you built. <laughs> <laughs> that you wouldn't let anyone yeah. else climb for so long. You guys are the winners. <laughs> you Super won. Super winners. <laughs> it's amazing. Good job, everybody. Um, let's see. Um, oh, the history of exploration. Sure. You know, the explorers. Let me ask you something. Who but straight white men has achieved so much in discovering and exploring places that had already been thoroughly discovered and explored? Are you, wait, are you referencing? I'm saying, I'm saying. Just, oh, all of them. All of them. I'm saying you got your, you got your. You show up in Mexico. Yeah. And there's the Mayan Empire. Sure, there's a whole group. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of people that have been there for centuries. Yeah. But we discovered it. Yes. And we explored it with the help of their guides. Well, yeah. Well, I mean. Guides specifically, you know, nice little uh, Sacagawea. You sure. That. You were like, well, what about Sacagawea? And I'm like, nope, guide. Yeah, she was Lewis like, and Clark. Those are the stars. Those are the explorers. Ooh. They explored. She All she did was show them what the natives had already found. She led the way for them to explore. For their exploration. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. She explored the way that, yeah, the way that you explore someone else's house when you show up. They yeah. they. Ex- they explored that. Colonization, Dan. Oh, such an achievement of, of, of the straight white male world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We went and found places that we thought were... Subjugated the people. That had, that had va- things of value to us. Oh, resources. Oh, hell and yeah. And we said, we claim this. Yeah. This belongs to us now. And all of the other people there were like, uh, excuse much? And we yep. said, shush, shush, shush. No, that's correct. That's correct. That's right. Do you see that we have these pointy, slicey things <laughs> and also these hollow, shooty things? It's ours! Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> International privilege. These things need to be celebrated, Dan. Because Lord knows in no other way are these things celebrated. Uh, no. a, a man... A straight man in, 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 in modern America just doesn't get to feel celebrated. No. Except no, no. by earning, getting more money for the same work, getting hired at a much higher rate with the same qualifications. Mm-hmm. Uh, Having sort of the voice of authority. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Getting listened to when he has no business being listened to. <laughs> But yeah. let's celebrate it, Dan. We, yeah, well, I'm... Yeah. We, white men, we salute you. We do. And your vast achievements. Oh, and all you straight guys, so important. So important. <laughs> uh, we salute you. It's funny because, you know, I, we, we're making fun, uh, be, but there are guys out there, and I see this... You know, here's, here's the thing. That, like, my group of friends is pretty on 
point with these issues. I got okay. a pretty woke group of friends. Uh, however, I'm in some groups on Facebook. Yeah. And like some of the atheist groups have these ramp, these, have so many guys who are so butthurt <laughs> about like, you know, women. Yeah. International Women's Day. And so mad when a woman has the gall to get on there and say, you know what? Uh, here's my experience. Yeah. You know, I there was one woman in a group recently who wrote who posted a thing about like, you know, I because society is what it is, I am afraid a lot of the time around men. Hmm. And uh, you know, if you really if you are really believe in equality and stuff, then you should call yourself a feminist out loud and work toward changing our society so that I don't have to be afraid of you, of men. Right. And I was like, all on board. I was like, hells yeah, feminist right here. That's me. And then all of these other guys were like, you don't have to be afraid of men. Fuck you. Blah, blah, blah. Men are, I'm a man and you don't have to be afraid of me. There's just a small group of men that, you, that, that people should be afraid of. And just because they're criminals doesn't mean that I have to be lumped in with that. And how dare you? And I was just like, dudes, what the fuck? Yeah. I, you know, I read another thing that recently came out. This is another guy, and he was talking about how, you know, <clears throat> he he was he basically did a post sort of apologizing for the ruckus he caused on another thing. Oh, no. Uh, by the way, guys, if you want to apologize for something, don't make it worse in the apology. Oh, no. What but he, those? But what he, what he was saying was that he, uh, you know, he... Um, the, what informed his objections were a couple of things. And oh. he told the story of walking down the street and, a, you know, he, he was walking behind, you know, he's a, a, a ways behind a woman, but because he was tall, he was gaining on her. Right. And as he got closer, she kind of little, did a little head fake and then crossed the street ah, yeah. to get away from him. Right. And he was like, super duper offended by this. And then, and then, uh, and then he said. Also, uh, he had a problem. He had a problem with uh, active consent for sex, uh, meaning like if the woman's drunk, then there's a rape happening. And she, he had heard somebody claim that and stuff. Consent's a, a sticky issue. I right. get that. But here's the thing. Let's just start with this whole. It's an offensive. It's an. It's offensive to you to a man. For a woman to cross the street to avoid you. Because mm. not all men. Hashtag not all men. <laughs> Hashtag uh, I'm not a rapist. Right. Guess what? She doesn't know you, fucker. <laughs> she doesn't know that you're not a rapist. She doesn't know that she's safe. Right. She's just crossing the street. That's what she did. Yeah. That was the big offensive thing that she did was cross the street to get away from you, a guy that she doesn't know. Right. I don't know. Who, who is gaining on her? Yeah. Who's approaching her? Right. Which, if you had just stayed back, maybe moderated your speed a little. Yeah. You know, or you, cross the, wouldn't, or you yeah. be a gentleman and you cross the street. Right. But I'm not a rapist, so, like, she doesn't have anything to fear. I'd right. probably protect her from a rapist if there was one. Uh, creepy. Fine. Why did that make me feel creepy? Be because, it's, because this defensiveness is bullshit. Yeah. Because of what it does, and he, okay, here's the thing, fellas. I'm gonna t I'm gonna talk to any guy who's bristling right now, who's saying, who who's who's disagreeing with us. Uh oh. Because let me tell you something. I'm gonna get real, straight talk. Watch out, people. Here comes Dan. I had this feeling. I know this feeling. I was a straight white male at a school that had more diversity than other schools in Salt Lake City. That's mm -hmm. not saying a lot. Right. And I remember. Being, you know, in high school and walking down the hallway. And at one point I heard someone yell, I hate white people. Mm. And I just thought to myself, well, what the fuck did I do? Right. I'm white. I've always been nice. Right. I respect others. Why am I getting lumped into this blanket? I hate blank people. Like, how dare they? I was so heartily offended and so mad. 
Because I was, because that person hates me for no reason. And isn't that what racism is? Hating someone for their, for the color of their skin? Isn't that what racism is? It turns out, no, that's not what racism is. <laughs> racism is hating a, uh, a, a, an, a, an, an oppressed minority group. Racism comes from the privileged position and goes down. It doesn't mm-hmm. come from the underprivileged position going up. That's, there's no such thing as reverse racism. It doesn't work that way. Right. If you are in the privileged position, guess what? Your group has done some shit, and it doesn't matter if you've done some shit. Your group has done the shit. Right. And you didn't ask to be born into that group, but that's where you are. Yeah. And those of us with the privilege... uh. If you you just don't get to feel that you just don't get to feel like you're part of a group that gets a parade, right? Because the entire world has been a parade for that group, and even if you always, were, and even if you were born into poverty and you've had a rough time your whole life and you were treated badly and you've been the victim, I get it. Like it doesn't right, it, but but, but what that's needs not the to point. happen though. Is I think a lot of times this discussion. Um, you're bringing up, you know, you're born into poverty, you're still white. I think that a lot of times though, right now, we're not acknowledging the lack of like, like, what does it mean to grow up poor in this country? Right. Right. And I think that that's a problem in this discussion is that, is that we, we say white people as a whole group, right? That that white privilege is the same across the board. Mm. And I don't think that it is. I think that I think that whiteness just put two people right next to each other, white, basically equal in most terms, put them in neutral clothes. Mm-hmm. You can't tell their background. Okay. The, the impression is two white people. Right. But one who comes from a background of wealth, privilege, education, access. Right. Right. And the other person who grew up in an area of impoverished schools sure uh an impoverished education that person doesn't have advantages and so i do think that um there needs to be an acknowledgement of the full range of privilege well yeah and poverty is is an underprivileged position yeah absolutely but here's the other thing that we need to acknowledge if you look when all of the other things are equal so a black person may come from a place of privilege too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there are people born into wealthy black households. Mm-hmm. Great. But even then, all other things being equal, wealthy black dude f- has few less privilege than wealthy white dude. Oh, absolutely. And poverty stricken black person has less privilege than poverty stricken white person. Absolutely. And like, we just have to acknowledge that like, there is... There are tangible differences that just you just happen into. What we need to do is we need to create sort of a matrix <laughs> that lists out all the different combinations. Oh, it's been it's been of, created. Of it's privilege. There. It's out right? there and disadvantage. Right, and so that you can find yourself on in, somewhere in this matrix, so that you understand better your position and you can and when people start speaking in very blanket terms like we just were sure right um that you understand what part of your privilege is being discussed right and what part of your disadvantage is not being discussed and there's nuance to all of this conversation and and the other thing is that it's not like we're saying that you know a poverty-stricken black person can't achieve Hmm. Of course they can. They're just starting at a greater disadvantage. Right. You know what I mean? It's like we can, yes, people can climb all the way to the top of the mountain, but some of, some people start a ledge up. Right. Or three ledges up. Right. Or four ledges up. It's more like there's a, it's a thousand ledges up. <laughs> right. With this huge gap in the middle. Right. Exactly. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell's, um, revisionist history podcast uh-huh. it's fantastic he gets into this whole thing of what does it mean to be a racial minority mm. from the inner city um you know and what does that mean in sort of the the myth of america that any child can be president right yeah right? any child can achieve and he breaks it all down and it's it's bullshit 
it's complete and utter bullshit, yeah. you know? Um, and so, um, I highly recommend that podcast to everybody, by the way. Yeah. Um, I mean, but that's the, the point here isn't that all white people have it easy uh-huh. and all men are, you know, and, and the point of feminism is certainly not that all men are bad for women and all men are rapists and all men are right. But, uh, again, women, you know, a woman, a woman, a woman would be foolish. Yeah. Walking down the street mm-hmm. to just trust a man that she doesn't know. Right. Because there's the very real possibility that that man could be an attacker. Right. And right. doesn't even have to be a rapist. It could be a purse snatcher. Right. It could be any number of things. Right. She uh, was simply being prudent. Yeah. She was. <laughs> That's it. She was keeping herself safe yeah. in the best way she knew how. Uh, and so, like, yeah. And we as men need to be aware of the fact that a woman's position in this society is less safe than a man's position. That doesn't mean a man can't be attacked. Right. Of course, a man can be attacked. Of course. Men are attacked. Right. Uh, but, but the fact of the matter is that a woman's position is more tenuous. And we as men need to be aware of that and supportive of women and helpful to women. So what could this guy have done differently? He could, should have crossed the street. He should have crossed the street. Could he have yelled from far back and... Been like, not a rapist, not, not not the kind of guy you think I might be. I'm a good man. I'm a, I'm approaching you from behind, but I'm good. Don't worry, nothing to worry about. <laughs> not not a good idea. I don't know. That that's worthwhile. Not a good idea. Yeah, it's and I have you know I've crossed the road realizing that I was sort of in a position to make a woman nervous because because mm. what fuck she doesn't need to feel nervous right and I don't need to be participating in that so. Right. And there's nothing you can do that's going to make her not feel nervous. No. I, there's no way for me in you that small situation. You You can't strike up. God forbid you actually try to strike up a conversation. Don't. Don't. Um, don't <laughs> do that. Just know it sucks. But yeah, you belong to a group yeah. that, uh, that poses danger to her. Yeah. And so if you don't pose danger to her, let her Show know. Show her that you don't. By le- by By... By giving her Proper really space. distancing yourself. Yeah. 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 That's appropriate. It's, it sucks if you, you know, it sucks to feel like the finger is pointing at you. Right. When you've done nothing wrong. So show that you're not that person. Yeah. yeah I think that's, the, w- that's the way pretty to, legit. The, the way to demonstrate that you're not that guy is by not being that guy. Yeah. So yeah. go to the other side of the street. Give her, give her space. Make her feel safe. That's how to be a hero in this situation. Right. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe just someday, white men, if you're good, will get you a parade. Well, if you're really, really <laughs> lucky, you'll lose all your privilege and become, um, you know, somehow become an underprivileged uh, person. Oh, won't that be a glorious day for you? <laughs> you'll get your own parade. You'll have your own battles oh. to fight. You know, you can march in any of these parades you want to, by the way. That's true. If you're true. just feeling left out of parades... Pick one of these parades. Pick a cause that's that's close to your heart and go fucking show up. Be an, be an ally and yeah. just say, hey, I want to march in your parade. I love you guys. Right. And guess, guess what? what they'll say? Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Here's a t-shirt. And a hat. Enjoy. Here's a, a, a poster board and a pen. Yeah. Come up with a clever quip. Right. Don't. When you Have get the, fun. When you get there, don't tell them that they're doing their parade wrong. I will say that. <laughs> don't don't try to take over. Don't don't tell them how they can improve everything. <laughs> that is not your place. You know, I was at this men's parade once. <laughs> this is how we did it all. Yeah, man, I I've got a lot of parade experience, so maybe you guys should probably listen to what I've got to say about it. I'm gonna mansplain a little bit for you, real quick. <laughs> what you want are floats. I see. <laughs> Just a dearth of floats and marching bands. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really feeling these uh, go-go boy things. So maybe we should do something different. You know what would be better than uh, than this uh, electronic music? Country. You guys should play some of that. Uh, gross. <laughs> that made my skin crawl down. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have anything you'd like to add, and boy, we're, we might get some fun emails on this one, Eesh. but we want them. Please write into us, podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. And while you're at it, you could leave us a voicemail message, 
8442. That's yeah. the number to call. Do it. We love voicemail messages. Uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. And while you're on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, uh, but we'll let you in and then you, you're there. Yes. And speaking of that closed group, hey, thanks so much to Amy, Danny, and Sarah for their work uh, moderating that group. They're amazing. And thanks to Mackenzie for all of her hard work on Facebook, all the posts and uh, and all of that. Thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club and Gordon Johnson for the use of their fine, fine music. And thank you, dear listener, for listening. Sure do love it when you do. Bye! Bye!